reading from the Holy Gospel according to St Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Immediately after feeding the crowd with the five loaves and two fish, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side, while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But by this time the boat, battered by the waves, was far from the land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning he came walking towards them on the lake. And when the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified, saying, It is a ghost! And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, do not be afraid, it is I. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and came towards Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened, and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me! Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, You of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased. And those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. When we go up to Scotland to see my son in the Hebrides, we usually drive along Loch Lomond. There's one quite long section of the road where there is rock on one side and water on the other and when we approach a bend I pray desperately that there isn't a lorry or a coach coming the other way. There is some beautiful scenery in the Highlands. It takes my breath away when I see the reflection of a mountain in an expanse of still water on a sunny day. Galilee is a large freshwater lake with mountains around it. I remember looking back as we travelled back up the hillside, uh, away from Galilee, heading towards Jerusalem, and I was determined that I would try and store the image in my mind and bank it in my memory. Lakes and mountains are places of mystery and hidden danger. Wind and weather, storm and fog, can turn a picture postcard scene into a death trap. Water comes down from the mountains in the Golan Heights and flows south into the River Jordan. It has brought life to that region for thousands of years who has control of that water has fed numerous conflicts right up to the present day. Jesus' home at Nazareth was 15 miles from the nearest town on the lake, the Roman settlement of Tiberias, not a place that Jesus seems to have ever visited. A couple of miles north of there was the village of Migdal, where Mary Magdalene originated. When Jesus began preaching and healing, he based himself at Capernaum, the home of Peter, Andrew and their family fishing business. Those fishermen worked from midnight to dawn. In the darkness and in the quiet, the fish would come closer to the surface to feed, and so were easier to catch with their nets. Picture yourself then on a small boat as the skies begin to lighten before dawn. Every sound magnified by the silence. You're keeping an eye 
up into the sky and across to the waves, attentive to what the weather is doing. And on a calm, misty morning, it feels otherworldly. The water, like a glass surface you could walk along. Our Gospel reading continues from the feeding of the 5,000. It's been a while since Peter and the others have been out fishing. But their boat offered a good way for Jesus' group to travel to those different points around the lake. Jesus now needed a place to be on his own. He gave out a lot of himself, meeting and talking with so many people. They unburdened themselves to him and he needed to lay those burdens down in company with his heavenly Father. He wanted time to think and to pray. So he tucked himself into a sheltered spot high up among the rocks and the disciples left him there. And there was something strangely comforting for them in being on the lake as the hour got later. It reminded the fishermen of their old life, a time with familiar routines and fewer challenges. They drifted and they dozed their way through the night. Then at first light, they pointed the boat towards the shore where they had left Jesus. But now they found the wind had picked up and that they were making little progress towards it. As they peered ahead, a ghostly figure appeared to be walking towards them, and a, a terror swept over them. Someone made an anxious cry. But then they heard the familiar voice of Jesus telling them not to be afraid. Peter was exhilarated. He had never regretted for a moment leaving everything to follow this man. His life was now so different. Knowing Jesus made every moment better. There were times with Jesus when Peter felt that anything was possible. Lord, if it's you, command me to come to you on the water. Peter spoke without thinking. When he heard the reply, he didn't hesitate. Before he realised it, he was over the side of the boat, looking ahead and walking straight towards Jesus. But then his brain kicked in. He came to his senses. His body fell into line. Then he was in the water, thrashing desperately, shouting for help. Jesus was there, caught hold of him, and they both clambered into the boat. All was calm again. The question that Jesus left Peter with is one that troubles all of us who love Jesus. You of little faith, why did you doubt? When he stepped out of the boat and walked on the water, Peter followed his heart and something amazing happened. He doubted because in the world in which we live, walking on water isn't possible. That reality came flooding back into his mind, and he sank. Our Gospel records, though, how for just a few glorious moments, another reality broke through, and he was doing it. Among mountains and lakes, people catch glimpses of God, and of the thin curtain that hides the reality behind every day. Amidst the flat fields of South Lincolnshire, it may be less obvious and look rather different. But the signs are here too. Jesus truly is the Son of God. When we follow him, we would be foolish to rule anything out. Amen.
Amen.